everybody, this is Brittany from Teach Me ABA. And today I'm gonna to continue with our series as we discuss task list five for those individuals that are studying for the BCBA exam, like myself. So let's get into it. Now, for this video, we're gonna discuss C-4, and this is measuring temporal dimensions of behavior. So if you remember, in the previous videos, we've been discussing measuring behavior based on repeatability. If you've watched these previous videos of um, C and B, we've been talking about uh, behaviors and how to define them and how to start collecting data on them. So for this video, we're gonna go ahead and talk about dimensions of temporal extent and temporal locus, and I'll go into that a little bit more if you'll just follow along with me. Measures based on temporal extent are defined as every instance of behavior that occurs within some amount of time. And again, all of these definitions, all of the information, I'm getting right from the Cooper book. So the white book, our ABA Bible, if you will. Specifically, um, we need to discuss measuring behaviors that have an observable start and observable end. So for this, we use duration as a method for measurement of a behavior. This is an important uh, measurement to use for behaviors that occur either at long durations or short durations. It just depends on what behavior you're going to be targeting. Oftentimes in the field, um, we use duration to measure length of time for a client that may be engaging in a tantrum. So tantrums can occur for long periods of time. Therefore, duration is gonna be really important for measuring that particular behavior, especially if you wanna reduce it. We don't want a client out in the community that is having a tantrum for an hour, right? If we can shorten that to maybe something more like five minutes, then that's gonna be a little bit more easy for that child to just move on with their life and keep going with more important things that they need to do. Another example of an appropriate behavior for measurement using duration is going to be behaviors that have to do with a task or a skill. For example, let's say that we have a client with a skill um, or a task that needs to be done, such as independent play or time spent on a task like homework. So for that, we're gonna wanna use duration because we want to increase the amount of time that this client is doing that particular task. Again, when in the community or in school, if we have a client that's only spending about five minutes of time on their homework, well, that's not really gonna be giving them the amount of time that they need to really grasp all the knowledge that they need. And especially in the future, we all have those long study nights that we have to get ready for. So it's really good that we prepare these clients for that as well. Now, in order to collect this, you might just use a stopwatch, uh, depending on what kind of application that you're using. You would either start it as soon as the behavior starts, you would end it as soon as the behavior ends. Obviously, this is depending on what that definition of that behavior looks like. If you look into our earlier blocks, we actually have something that will help you measure behaviors. So the next dimension of measuring behavior that we want to discuss is temporal locus. So within ABA, we're talking about measures that are going to be defined by every instance that the behavior occurs at a certain point in time with respect to other events. So we need to separate this definition into two kinds of behaviors that we're going to observe. So the first is going to be behaviors that occur with respect to other events, as I mentioned. And the other behavior that we're interested in is going to be behaviors that occur, um, but specifically the amount of time that occur between the two responses of that same behavior. And I'll go into that. First, we're going to discuss latency. So this is defined as the measure of time that occurs from the presentation of the stimulus to when that individual responds to that stimulus. When I say stimulus, I mean anything that someone can respond to. For example, let's say that we have a mother who has told her child to clean the room. The instruction is the stimulus, and the response is going to be that the child is cleaning up their rooms. It can either happen immediately, or as some of us know who deal with children, it could happen much later, maybe even 30 minutes later. Now, this is an important behavior to measure since the caregiver obviously would want that their child complete that task in a quicker time than 30 minutes. So we want to go ahead and either shorten the amount of time that's happening or shorten the latency of time between the instruction and the response. So this is obviously a behavior that we'd want to decrease. We wanna take it, that child from taking 30 minutes to complete cleaning their room um, as soon as their mom tells them and we wanna narrow it down to about maybe five minutes as soon as the instruction is given to them. This measure can also be used to increase the time elapsed between a stimulus and a response. So 
And my example would be a client who responds to a question in a classroom so quickly that they might not actually be processing that question in their mind. So they just immediately raise their hand. Um, it would be beneficial that this child really process rather than respond immediately. Lastly, we're going to discuss inner response time, or also known as IRT. So this is defined as a measure or the amount of time between two responses of the same behavior. So example, let's say that we have a child that takes bites of food every three seconds. So this is obviously going to become a little bit of a choking hazard and we'd want to have that child safely be eating their food. For example, Let's say that we have a child that takes bites of their food every three seconds. Obviously, this is a hazard for the child during their meal time. Or vice versa, let's say that we have a child that takes roughly two minutes to take a bite of their meal. That wouldn't really be productive in their life because um, they wouldn't really get any chance to have anything else done. So we'd want to either increase that amount of time or we want to decrease that amount of time. This measurement is then reported as rate of response. So, Shorter IRT means that there are higher rates of response, and therefore long IRTs mean that there are longer rates of responding that is happening. So once again, this measure of behavior can either help increase or decrease the behavior. It just depends what you're looking at. Now, I know I've given you a lot of information and you might have a lot more questions. I really look forward to them in the comments section down below. As always, please like, subscribe, and share. And good luck studying out there.